الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear respected brothers, elders, ulama'i karam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can I request the brothers, unless they are post 50 or they have a back problem, to come slightly forward? Brothers, come slightly forward. It's one of the etiquettes of the gatherings. <coughs> The life of a true believer <coughs> is that he spends his every moment of his life in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means he spends his every year, every month, week, day, hour, minute and second in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the true believer understands that if one moment elapses without the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if he was to spend whatever is in the dunya to retrieve that one moment, it will never come back. And this is why every morning the day calls out to man and says, Ya ibn Adam, ana khalqun jadeed wa ala amalika shaheed, iqtani minni fa inni la'udu ila yawm al qiyamah. It says, O oh, son of man, I am a new creation and I am upon your actions a witness. So derive benefit from me because I will not return until the day of judgment. And when the day returns on the day of judgment, either it will give a witness for you or it will give a witness against you. One of two things, either for you or against you. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, when the believers enter into Jannah, they will only have remorse over one thing. And that is those moments which elapse without the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else would they have remorse upon it besides those moments which elapse without the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the reality is that if a person spends every single moment of his life in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even then he cannot repay the basic favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. Imam Hakim has related in Mustadrak that there was a man who lived on an island and he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 600 years. 600 years he unflinchingly worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his dua was that when Allah takes him away from this dunya, Allah takes him away in the state of prostration. And it happened so that when he passed away, he died in the state of prostration. And when he came in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah said, take my servant into Jannah through my rahmah. And this man said, oh Allah, not through your rahmah, through my worship. I worshipped you for 600 years. And Allah said, do you want to enter Jannah through your worship? He said, yes Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angel to bring a scale and place his 600 years of worship in one side and just the favor of his eyesight in the other side. Recently they did a survey in Switzerland that how much would it cost to duplicate a one human eye? They came to the conclusion that it would cost 48 million dollars. It would be the size of a horse and it still would not have the mobility of a human eye. So they placed his 600 years of worship in one side of the scale and just the favor of his eyes in the other. And the side in which his favorite eyesight was, was heavier than his 600 years of worship. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, take him, throw him into the Jahannam. And when the angels were dragging him into the fire of Jahannam, he said, oh Allah, enter me into Jannah through your Rahmah. Was it the time that I brought you into existence and you did not exist? He said, indeed Allah. And Allah said, I did that through my Rahmah. He said, did I not bring for you clean water from salty water? He said, indeed my Lord. Allah said, I did that through my Rahmah. He said, did I not allow you to worship me for 600 years? He said, indeed my Lord. Allah said, I did that through my Rahmah. Allah said, did I not allow the angels to extract your Ruh while you were in the state of prostration? He said, indeed my Lord. Allah said, I did that through my Rahmah, so now enter into Jannah through my Rahmah. Now enter into Jannah through my Rahmah. But the reality is that there are very few people who spend their entire life in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality is that we'd be lucky if we spend 60 minutes a day in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a reality. This is a person who spent 600 years 
and Allah entered him into Jannah through his Rahmah. And how much time do we take out for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Today I want to speak about a person who did spend his every moment in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was well known about this person before he embraced Islam that there was more likelihood of his donkey embracing Islam than him. This is what the Sahaba would say. There's more likelihood of his donkey embracing Islam than him. But this shows that guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whoever Allah decrees guidance for, if the entirety of humanity unite on its misguidance, they will never be able to misguide him. Never will they be able to misguide him. And similarly, if the entirety of humanity unite upon the guidance of a person, and Allah has not decreed guidance for him, he will dwell in the darknesses of kufr for the rest of his life. This man was then Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And it is the final moments of the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that I want to speak about today. The famous Tabi'i Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib rahmatullah alayhi mentions that upon occasion we were returning from Mina to Makkah. And when we reached the outskirts of Makkah, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wanted to rest. And he took some sand and he made a pillow out of it. This was a man who was the leader of the superpower of his day. But what was his pillow? It was sand. And before he lay down, he made a dua. He said, Allahumma inni as'aluka shahadatan fi sabilik, wa mawtan fi baladi rasulik. He said, Oh Allah, I ask you for martyrdom in your path, and death in the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hafsa radiallahu anha, the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhu, who was listening to this dua, and she found it strange that if you want martyrdom, you go in a battlefield. You go and do jihad, you want martyrdom and you want it in the city of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepted the dua of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. The incident leading up to the martyrdom of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was that in Medina there was a Zoroastrian slave, a Persian <coughs> prior worshipper. And he was a slave of the famous Sahabi radiallahu anhu, Mughir ibn Shoba. And Abu Lu'lu'a was a very skilled carpenter. And what he would do, he would work and he would give a portion of his wealth to his master. Upon occasion he came to Umar ibn Khattab anhu, and he complained that the amount that he had to give to his master was excessive. And Umar anhu said, I will speak to Mughira and I will get back to you. And Umar anhu spoke to Mughira and he came to the conclusion that the amount that he had to give to his master was not excessive. And when Abu Lu'lu'a came back, Umar anhu informed him of his decision. And Abu Lu'lu'a became enraged. And he said, oh, Umar, is your just for everybody in the dunya besides me? And then he would go around Medina and he would say, Akala Umar Kabdi, Umar has eaten my liver. Upon occasion, Umar anhu was walking by and he saw Abu Lu'lu'a. And addressing Abu Lu'lu'a, Umar anhu said, he said, oh, Abu Lu'lu'a, I hear that you make great windmills. Make me a windmill. And Abu Lu'lu'a said sarcastically, he said, oh, Umar, I will make you a windmill that the dunya will speak about. I will make you a windmill that the dunya will speak about. And he went on his way. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he turned to his companions and he said, do you know what he's alluding to? He's alluding to the fact that he will try to kill me. And the companion said, oh, Mirul Mu'mineen, if that's the case, then let's deal with him now. Let's deal with him. And listen to the words of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said, preemptive action cannot be taken on the basis of suspicion. Preemptive action cannot be taken on the basis of suspicion. This was a kafir who was going around Medina and saying that Umar has eaten his liver. And at that time Umar ibn Khattab anhu was the leader of the superpower of his time. They had defeated the Romans and the Persians. But Umar's sense of justice wouldn't allow him to take preemptive action. Really, in the justice of Umar ibn Khattab anhu, there is a great lesson for those who regard themselves as civilized. Those who initiate wars on the back of preemptive action. Who lock up people indefinitely because they may do this or they may do that. Who lock up people on a faraway island and leave them in legal limbo like Guantanamo Bay because they may be a threat to national security who really stooped to new levels of injustices, like locking up a 13-year-old child on Guantanamo Bay. Do you recently remember this incident about this girl?
who ran away with an American soldier, Siobhan Pennington. She was a 13-year-old girl, and they didn't blame her because she was young, she was vulnerable, she was innocent. And no blame was leveled against her. But here you can lock away a 13-year-old child on a faraway island, in a cage, and you can still regard yourself as civilized. If you want to see justice, you look into the life of Umar ibn Khattab anhu. That his deep insight allowed him to ascertain from the words of Abu Lu'lu'a that he would try to kill him. But his sense of justice did not allow him to take preemptive action. The day Umar ibn Khattab anhu passed away, Amr ibn Maymun rahmatullah mentioned that between me and Umar ibn Khattab there is only one person. Meaning that I 